Hi, um, my name is Lisa Clark. I am a library at NOAA Central Library. Welcome to National Library Week. Um, thank you for your patience while we um, we work through some, some issues, but uh, today we have Jan Thomas here who will be talking to us about the um, Institutional Repository. And uh, I am really excited to get that started. I'm just gonna take a second to get my slides going here. Uh, Jan Thomas um, also is a contract li librarian with MPF ZAI, uh, who is on contract working at the NOAA Betty Peterson Memorial Library in College Park. So um, as part of our, our week, we are asking uh, and highlighting some of our librarians and asking them to uh, answer a couple of questions. So uh, here we go, Jan. Here's our first question. Who are you? Hi, uh, as Lisa already pointed out, my name is Jan Thomas. Uh, I'm the librarian for the Betty Peterson Memorial Library, which is located at the NOAA Center for Weather and Climate Prediction in College Park. And I have been working there for probably a little over 10 years now. Excellent. Um, and why did you become a librarian? So uh, both of my parents were our teachers growing up, they're retired now, um, but their lesson to me was to never go into teaching. Um, <laughs> so I I took that to heart and I went to, to college, I got out, um, I work, I was working in a small newspaper for um, a couple of years after I graduated and I, I knew I, I needed a career change. Um, and I, I, I sort of just looked around and thought of the places that made me happy. I spent a lot of time, um, you know, researching articles that I was writing in the library, but also going there for lunch and, and you know, for entertainment as well. And so I really just liked uh, library as an atmosphere, a place, uh, a place of learning, um, but without the sort of structured classroom setting that I think were a lot of the trappings that my parents were advising me against. So um, I also really like that, um, you know, being a librarian is very service oriented and you can help people achieve their information needs and you can actually see the progression through their research process. So that's wonderful. That's, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's very similar reasons to why I'm a librarian. Um, well, because we're, we are framing this week uh, through National Library Week, why are NOAA libraries important? So for me, the NOAA libraries are really important because they they sort of bridge a lot of the gaps between um, the different line offices within NOAA, but also us to the general public as well. Um, we support all aspects of NOAA's mission um, and not just their researchers. So um, I think I think that. Uh, that NOAA libraries are really important because we we provide all sorts of tools and resources um, for NOAA researchers that they may not even be aware come from the library in terms of databases, ebooks, journals, um, all uh, all available to people um, just by you know searching it and se seeking it out. Um, and in addition to that, there's things like the the NOAA IR, which is a platform that offers increased visibility to um, NOAA, NOAA as an organization and the research that we do um, to the greater academic community and the general public. Um, um, so yeah, I think that um, in addition to that, like other employees who jobs aren't even science-based that are, um, uh, we, we help support them as well through um, through resources that allow you to learn a different skill, um, uh, how to code, policy making, project management, things like that. Um, we, we empower um, all of NOAA staff to, to reach their goals. Excellent. And before we, you answer this next question, I just want to add to the audience that at the end, um, of um, of Jen's discussion, uh, there will be an opportunity to answer your questions. So if you look inside of your um, your control panel, you'll see a questions chat box. So please feel free to ask any questions you might have for Jan about 
um, the library or specifically the, the institutional repository or the IR as we call it. So Jan, what do you want Noah to know about your job at the library or the library itself? So um, <clears throat> the one thing I, I think that I'd like to emphasize is that um, in addition to all the great services um, that the NOAA Central Library provides, we also have a lot of sites and in NOAA um, that have specific NOAA network libraries. There's about 18 satellite libraries. Do you get it? It's like satellites in NOAA. It's like, okay. Um, but they're located throughout uh, different NOAA facilities and they offer unique holdings um, and journals um, that can uh, really dig down in, and meet the specific needs of um, their particular patrons. I mean, NOAA is such a, a wide ranging and diverse um, organization that has a lot of different research needs. It's, it's impossible to think that you know, one site um, would have all of that. Um, so we do have separate libraries that offer um, specific things to, to meet those needs of their particular patrons. Um, specifically my library, um, the Betty Peterson Memorial Library, we we have a, a, a weird thing called, maybe it's not weird, but we have a thing called Science on a Sphere. And uh, it's a really, um, really interesting data visualization device that was actually created by NOAA to better visualize um, uh, satellite data. And it's a, it's a four foot, four, mine's four foot, but it's either four foot or six foot for those that have never seen science in a sphere. Um, carbon fiber sphere that hangs from a ceiling that has four 4K projectors that um, project uh, um, data sets uh, visualize data sets from NOAA on the surface so that you can see um, you can see uh, our our satellite feeds and things like that and it's updated every day. Um, in addition to that, um, again, just at my facility, um, we have a, a MOU, a memorandum of understanding with the university because our um, the NCWCP is technically on the campus. So we have an agreement with their library and um, that we can get uh, our patrons in specific to my building uh, access to research affiliate status with the university, which allows them to access the electronic content to be able to go and utilize the libraries on campus to check out things from their facilities and you know there's other benefits to, to on campus so you know uh, i would really encourage people to uh if you haven't and you're you're in one of um uh, these other locations other than you know in silver spring to go out and uh and seek out your library and to see what other benefits they they would have specific to your to their location Absolutely. Uh, as you probably can see that our, our host, uh, Katie Rowley, has joined us, and I think we'll be continuing with the questions. So, uh, Katie, can you, can you, is your audio okay? Yes, I believe my audio is okay. Can you hear me? Absolutely. Okay. Well, I'm going to... Awesome. Um, Thank you so much, Lisa. <laughs> um, our questions continue, Jan. Yeah. So, uh, first one, how do NOAA libraries provide access? We provide access in a lot of different ways. Um, we're sort of a tiered service where we we provide access, um, you know, to our content uh, virtually um, through uh, VPNs, so an IP authentication. So technically, if you're on a NOAA networked device or on site at a, at NOAA. Um, you should be able to access NOAA-wide resources that we have and provide to our, our, our NOAA-wide community. So things like um, the American Meteorological Society journals, um, American Geophysical Union journals, uh, Elsevier's um, Freedom Collection um, through Science Direct, and, and a number of other resources that are, that are offered NOAA-wide, we, we do offer virtually. Um, through that access. We also have, um, as I mentioned before, with the network libraries, um, additional unique items at specific physical locations or through specific VPNs. So um, while there are those no wide subscriptions that I mentioned previously, um, each satellite library will 
um, may have their own set of unique um, journals and databases uh, to provide more uh, catered access to their researchers. Um, we also provide access to our physical holdings through our catalog. Um, the catalog details where the NOAA network, um, where in the NOAA network you can find a, a physical item and whether it's available to check out. Um, and so before the end of the year, uh, we're actually implementing a new catalog, which will help further unify our collections um, and services and uh, make items more discoverable to our patrons. Um, and we also offer access to materials that we don't have through our interlibrary loan service. So I've always told my patrons when they come to the library, even if I don't have it, I can get it for you. It, whether it be from another NOAA uh, networked library through you know, um, a, a shuttle service, um, my, because of the, our close proximity, um, we have a, a shuttle that runs once a day back and forth between Silver Spring Campus and my building. So if there's something at the central library, I can usually get it within a 24 hour period for, for my patrons, but also through interlibrary loan. Um, so uh, if, if we don't have something there, we have a wide, a wide range of libraries that we trade freely with um, from academia and other federal libraries. So. I think you answered my the follow-up question, which is what do you know libraries provide access to? So it provides actually a whole host of things. <laughs> oh, sure. But in it, I mean, the things that you normally consider, we have books, obviously, and, and journals, but we also provide access to databases, um, to eBooks. We have uh, the Wiley collection. We have um, the uh, ProQuest. Uh, ebook central and and um, overdrive um, ebook collections which which are available to our patrons but we also offer um, software uh, so endnote if if you're we have a no wide subscription to that so if, if you're interested in, in using endnote um, to organize your um, your your the articles and citations then then we can we have that bibliographic software for you um, but also, you know, we, we do have the photo library, which is, um, it has over 80,000 images that, um, you know, sort of highlight and showcase the NOAA's historical work um, of science, of, of our scientists and throughout the agency. Um, and those images are, are distributed, for, uh, they're in the public domain and you can't put copyright on them. So they're distributed freely through the, um, the, the photo library. Um, and then, you know, we also offer access to the general, uh, to the general public uh, by ma making NOAA's documents and research available through the institutional repository. I'm muted. That brings us to our next question. Um, how does the institutional repository, as you mentioned, uh, how does it serve as this access point? So the institutional repository was um, created in response to a memorandum from the um, Office of Science and Technology Policy from the White House, dictating that government agencies that spend over $100 million in research need to make their research available to the general public that whose tax dollars help paid for them. Um, so NOAA's response was to come up with the PAR plan, which is the plan for increasing public access to research results. I know we got, we're got we deep in the alphabet soup of NOAA now. Um, and that policy uh, uh, helped us create the NOAA Institutional Repository. Um, and the Institutional Repository uh, teams get submissions from uh, NOAA authored works, but also NOAA funded works. And then, um, the team adds metadata to them, and then we ingest them in the IR. Uh, from that point, um, they're indexed and made and uh, made crawlable by by Google. So um, those documents are made available to the general public, but they they also increase the discoverability and the public profile of our authors and our funded works um, through the repository. Um, uh, in addition to that. Um, we also have, uh, oh, 
this this may be more germane to your next point your next question <laughs> i can i can ask my next question um so how many people do access the institutional repository and following up how many documents are are in the institutional repository so yeah um the there have been over well over a million page views on the ir since it, it was established in 2016 um and Is last year your graphic. Should I show your graphic right yeah, now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Show the graphic. Okay, let's hop to that graphic. Thank you. Um, so on the right side of the page, you can see the page views for per fiscal year. Um, and so you can see oh, last year we had over 700,000 page views uh, alone, which is great. Um, there are about 3,500 or 35,000 unique items in the in the no IR. And um, and uh, every year, you can see along the left-hand side of the page, the amount of submissions that we are receiving has gone up and up. And um, the IR, uh, while we're focused on making all of our research more accessible, um, we're also focusing on the accessibility of the documents themselves. So 508 compliance is a big part of what we do at the IR. Um, and we work um, tirelessly to try and make sure that NOAA staff are um, well versed and and made to understand what um, five way compliance is and what the expectations that we have the doc documents to make sure that the screen readers are able to read um, these documents to to anyone who might have um, a visual impairment um, and not be able to to actually read it. Um, so you know we've we've made it a number of different uh, a number of different assets available to help uh, assist in in people making these documents 508 compliance. Uh, we we have the the central library has a 508 compliance with a uh, lib guide. Um, that has a number of different resources uh, on it, including a quick start guide, uh, which re can re it illustrates what exactly we're looking for when we're, we're determining something's 508 compliance. Um, but in addition to that, there have been a number of different webinars throughout the by myself, Jen Fagan Fry, and a number of other librarians um, that are available through the YouTube page, uh, our, our YouTube channel. Um, and then, you know. We recognize everyone has, you know, different learning styles. So if those aren't the ideal way for you to understand what uh, or need help understanding how to work Adobe, how to make things compliant in Word, um, we are available um, in a one-on-one -on -one capacity, and we also have office hours every Tuesday where IR staff um, is available through Google Meet to help you troubleshoot documents. And if you can't make that, then we'll make time in our schedule to try and meet with you and work through specific document documents individually um, at yours and our convenience. That sounds uh, accessible. <laughs> um, but I'm... I'm going to get to our last question uh, then since we are right on time and if anyone has a question, please place those in the, the question panel and we'll try to answer those. Uh, but Jen, can you tell us how many librarians work on access at, at NOAA? Sure. Um, so there are three, three main librarians that uh, up front that are, are um, processing submissions and those are myself, uh, Keith uh, Locantore and Chris Stevenson, who's just started. Um, so if you have corresponded with any member of the IR team, it's probably one of the three of us or Jen Fagan Fry, who is the institutional repository manager. Um, but in addition to that, we have an, uh, we have about um, six librarians behind the scenes that are working in different capacities um, to uh, to index and um, add metadata to the um, to submissions and make sure that they're they're available um, within a timely fashion. That includes um, Emily Johnson, who um, works on distributing DOIs for us, um, Jen Devine, Matthew Plank, um, Jeff Ray, and Hope Shin, who are all, all um, work in, with metadata. So um, it's a it's a real team effort, and um, there's there's a lot that goes in from uh, from that initial like uh, 
for, for a submission, uh, it's very easy for an a no author to submit something to us, you can either fill out a Google form that we have on the IRS page, or you can just email the repository account with your document and a citation. And then, you know, we take things from there. So there's a, there's a, a group of tireless librarians. Well, I don't know if we're tireless, but uh, maybe tired librarians. There's a group of librarians that that work um, to to make sure that all of those um, those submissions make it into the IR in a timely fashion and, and are available. Um, to be discovered by the general public and, and academia. Thanks, Dan. And I will note, uh, saying how many librarians work on access, we all work on access. So uh, more broadly, access, every library in, in the NOAA network is working on access and hope getting you access to our material and to our electronic resources. Uh, but here in Central Library and Jan at Betty Peterson Memorial Library, uh, we have a tight team that works to get access things into and you know out of the institutional repository. We do have one question and we've got one minute. So uh, Jan, this is something you can answer. I can follow up as well. Uh, what is the best way to access journal articles remotely? The best way? Um, well, because they're IP authenticated, you should be able to, if, if, we, have, if we have access to it, um, you should be able to go to the journals page just by doing a search and access it that way. If you don't have access to it um, and you think that we do by using the, we have a journal finder on the I'll NOAA Central Library and the NOAA Central Library's website. So if you believe that we should have access to it, there's probably an issue with the IP authentication. And then there are there is an access form again um, through the central library or specific to your satellite library. They might, they might have an access form as well, um, outlining or, or we, where you can get in touch with the librarian and they can investigate those issues um, and, uh, and, and troubleshoot them and make sure that the publishers know that um, we're not, we don't have access to the things that we do. But for the most part, you should just be able to go to the content and access it if from, you do have to, if you're if you're trying to access it virtually. Caveat, you have yeah. to be on VPN. <laughs> You've gotta be on the VPN, because if you're not on the VPN, then, then it's not technically a NOAA network connection. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're on site and you're using, uh, not Wi-Fi, but uh, your 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 a wired connection. You also should be able to access um, uh, NOAA Journal content that way as well. Yeah. So everyone who's remote, I mean myself and Jan included, if we need access to our journals and our collections, we we do have to make that VPN connection uh, to authenticate us. Make sure our databases know and our journal subscriptions know that we are NOAA and we have access to this and it's legit. Um, VPN isn't everyone's favorite thing, and we understand that. Uh, we are working towards a solution, hopefully in the near future, maybe by the end of the year, maybe by next year, to have something different than IP authentication, but that's what we work with now. So if you, if you know you should have access and you're on VPN, fill out that access form so we can figure out where the disconnect is. Uh, but if you're not sure if we have it, check the journal finder. And um, if, you, if we don't have access, that's when you come in with ILL or, you know, any number of ways, just email us and say, I want access. Yeah, yeah, I, I would <clears throat> I would definitely encourage anyone at any step in that process, whether or not you want to utilize the journal finder or you think there's an access issue or not, um, to reach out to your, your, your librarian. And um, if you don't, if we don't have access to it, we'll get it for you. So one way or the other, you're going to be able, if you, if you don't have access to that article and you need it, we'll make sure that you get it. Yes. Yes. So I want to thank everyone. Thank you, Jan, for presenting today. I want to thank everyone for coming and bearing with us as we uh, dealt with some technical issues with GoToWebinar. Uh, this was day two of National Library Week, uh, talking about access. Next, uh, tomorrow, we're going to be talking about connection, and I will be speaking on the library seminar service. But until then, I hope you all have a safe and healthy rest of your Tuesday, and we look forward to seeing you for day three of National Library Week tomorrow. Take care, everyone. Thank you.